Hi everybody, um, it's Richard from the Homeschool Freedom Club here and I've got a really special guest with me today. Um, I've got Cassie Swift who's the organiser of the Children's Mental Health Matters Summit that I'll be a speaker at in a few weeks time. Um, and I just wanted to bring Cassie in today to tell you all a little bit more uh, about the summit, about the background of the summit and, and what it means to her. So hi Cassie, welcome and thank you for joining me. Hello, thank you for having me today. <laughs> So uh, there's probably there's probably quite a few people in my profile and in the group that won't be aware of who you are. So can you just tell us a, a little bit about yourself and about your background? Yeah, so um, obviously my name is Cassie. I have um, I'm a single parent, three children aged nine, twelve, and fourteen. Um, we have lots of pets, which may they may show up. We've got five cats and dog, um, and I. I do several things. So I, I work with, there's a part of me that works with children to help with empowerment and confidence and um, that side of things. Um, I also help um, organize and publish collaborative books. Um, so I've been in eight myself, three of them have been published by by me as well. Um, they're more, there are more planned in the future. Um, and I am very passionate about home education and um trying to think of how to word it the current education system and how it is not fit for purpose and how it needs overhauling and and i mean like i say you're running a, a, a children's mental health summit and i feel that if for a lot of kids the school system you know that that's the underlying problem to a lot of kids mental health is, is that how you feel about it as well yeah, totally. So, you know, 95% of children and teens that I've worked with, I, I, I specialize, I do have a specialist and I'm not doing one to one work anymore, but I specialized in eating disorders and self harm. Um, and 95% of it stems from um, school, um, even when I'm doing the collaborative books with adults in their 30s, 40s, 50s, the things that they're talking about started in school. Yeah. So it's an ongoing thing that isn't changing and no one wants to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I, I can relate to that. We were chatting the other day and I was telling you that you know, I had depression into my mid 40s. I think you never entirely, you always have to be on the lookout for it, but it definitely stemmed from sort of experiences at school being bullied and, and, and such. And that was its, its roots. So I, I understand where you're coming from for the, with that. And it is that sort of what was what what led you to actually decide okay I'm going to put together a summit because I I've, I've worked in events I know it's a big task honestly it's not an easy thing to do um so what made you decide to kind of take that on so I I didn't is the answer <laughs> so I, I didn't it, it was never ever planned it was not yeah. part of anything I'd planned to do. So I'd set up a children's mental health Facebook group um, because, you know, it, it, in my opinion, it is a pandemic. There is so many people, you know, it's um, and around. So in 2022, I thought, well, I'll ask a few because in my network, there was quite like, a few people that work in the same thing. So I thought I'll ask on my Facebook page, Saturday afternoon, I put, I put a post out, see if anyone wants to come into my group during Children's Mental Health Week yeah. so as they don't have to listen to me all the time. So I put the post out and within two hours, I had over 50 responses wow. on the post. So I sat there and was like, well, that wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> 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 and I was like, okay so I need to do something I can't yeah. have everyone I was like I'll just have them in my group we'll, we'll plan it and then I was like well that's not fair to them because you know and I was trying to think of different ways and I was like okay the only thing I can think of is to do a summit like to do an event so that was how it started um was it sort of just grew and then I said to my friend Heather I um she's also like website and graphic designer yeah. and I was like can you whack together a landing page for me please because I want to try and get you know registrations yeah and that's where it all stemmed from so the first summit was organized and happened within two weeks oh wow um, and it was a big learning curve we had 50 speakers 
um, I done, they were all interviews. They were all live interviews over 10 days that were an hour long. Wow, that's a lot of work for one person. <laughs> and after, after I was quite poorly. Yeah. I was like, we're not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> so um last year we scaled it back um I think we had 30 speakers there was a mixture of pre-recorded and um and live but even then it it was still a lot um and then this year again the universe or you know god or whoever you believe in never does things it was meant to be quite small this year it was meant to be I'm still showing up because obviously I I was doing them in February um, my mum passed away in February this year, so it wasn't going to happen. So I said to Heather, we'll do something small. We'll do something in September time. If we can get 10, 15 speakers together this year, just so as we're consistent, yeah, that will be um, amazing. And this year is the biggest that it's been. <laughs> <laughs> so how many speakers have you got this year? So we've got 50, there'll be 56 presentations over 10 days. They're international speakers ranging from Canada right through to New Zealand um we've been endorsed by the ACCPH which is the accredited counsellors coaches psychotherapists and hypnotherapists we've got a guest speaker um who is Eva Abley who was a fine she's 16 years old and she was a finalist in Britain's Got Talent in 2022 so this year has gone like bigger than I (laughs) I thought (laughs) but that's that's how it started it basically was just a post on a Saturday that was like okay who wants to come into my group yeah it grew from there um and again I think that was the universal or or, you know God's way because if if they'd have said you're going to do this I would have gone no I'm not yeah yeah (laughs) sometimes just need chucking in at the deep end don't you sink sink or swim it's just it's just that (laughs) <laughs> but it goes to show that there's such a just a massive need for what you're doing as well. Um, and I, I'm I'm imagining that s- since COVID, you've seen an uptick in mental health problems as as well. And of course, you know the NHS isn't equipped to deal with it. People can't get appointments. It's you know for the kids, it's just it's just ridiculous. It's mayhem, and I I have some differing opinions about certain things, but when I, you know, so I'm to my talk in, in the summit, I'm doing two, but one of them is about self-harm. And I was looking into recent statistics for, for self-harm and the statistics they're releasing are lower than before. And they're saying, Oh, there's a decline now. Now I don't, I don't believe it. I think there yeah. is they've developed a loophole mm-hmm. or they're, they're doctoring it or they have made it so hard to go to hospital as a result because these are only ones that have been reported. Yeah. And the way you get from personal experience, the way you get treated, even though it was many, many years ago, the way you get treated, yeah. they make it so as you don't go because yeah. there is no way in this earth that they're decreasing. That, no. that There is no way. Well, there's, there's the old expression, isn't there? there's, there's lies, damn lies and statistics. And yeah, yeah. you can make the statistics say anything you want it to say, frankly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Um, but, it, you know, a lot of society, unfortunately, believe what is given to them. So they're like, well, it's going down. That's good. Eating disorders are going down. And it's like, no, they're not. They're not. Well, you can't say that. You, you well, look at it. Well, yeah, I'm looking at it, but it's not right. But, but if you're on the ground actually seeing this, mm. then you know, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's, it's a bit like I don't know. There was the, there were the Undertakers, weren't they? Reporting the increases in deaths recently, and people are going, "Well, that can't be right." But they're there. They're doing the job. They know. They you know they know if there's more dead people coming in or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it is. It's it's. Yeah, society is a funny thing. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Yeah, it's probably the polite way of putting it, to be honest. <laughs> but okay, so I mean, I think that that's absolutely amazing. So can, can you give us um, an idea of some of the topics that are going to be covered during the summit as well? Yeah, so this year, it's slightly different because there are so many speakers, we're doing sort of themed days. So as people yeah. can navigate it a bit easier. So we've got things like um, emotional regulation and empowerment. Um, on day one 
I'm not going to be able to remember all 10, but I will do my <laughs> best. <laughs> um, you know, sort of t- day two is teenage years. Mm-hmm. Um, day three, uh, we've got two days on neurodiversity, but day day three is the first one. Yeah. Um, day four is life skills, I believe. Um, day five is all about mindset and has some things related to um, us as parents as well. Yeah. Um, then we've got, home education and school anxiety um I can never remember what day seven is family dynamics that's what it is family (laughs) dynamics so we've got an array of things you you know there's um high conflict divorce um things around sleep in children so it's sort of the stuff that doesn't you know that happens within the home um then we've got complementary and alternative therapies so there's things being covered covered such as tapping hypnotherapy Mm -hmm. Um, essential oils you know that side of of stuff um then we got the second day of neurodiversity and then we finish on maybe that's mindset I think I've got the two Fridays but that's generally what yeah it is. there's a real broad range of topics there yeah and even that doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg really does it it's you no. know it's so much no. more that, that, that potentially could be in there but yeah. so that, that gives people a good idea of what to expect um, and also to say it's free to attend. Yeah, it is. It's a free event. So each day there's five or six talks and we've I've kept the talks as short as I can. So they're 20 to 30 minutes yeah. and they are free for 48 hours. Um, so it's enough time to be able to sort of catch up. Um, there is a Facebook group where they go out at certain, <clears throat> excuse me, at certain times for those who like a structure, or they will be going out via email at 9.30 every morning, and then you can watch the ones that you want. Um, and every speaker has given a free gift for the free ticket as well. Um, and if you prefer to read rather than watch videos, um, there's a transcript that you can get. Um, and all the videos are captioned as well for if you prefer to sort of read the captions and if, if you want to access the videos after 48 hours what happens then so there's um a vip pass which is um 55 pounds to upgrade and that there are payment plans available for that um, and that gives you lifetime access of every presentation um all of the transcripts you get all of the free gifts that the speakers are already given plus you get another lot of you know, 56 gifts that yeah. that are special just for the VIPs. Um, and you all, there'll also be um, one or two calls where you'll get to speak to the speakers that, that are um, in the event as well. So it's, um, yeah. That's, that's amazing though. Isn't it? And, and, you know, Hugh, I just absolute hats off to you for pulling this together because like I say, I've been in events for years and it's, it's not an easy job. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, you're basically, you know, the, the, the speakers aren't being paid to do this either. The, you know, we're turning up as well um, yeah. to be part of this. And the fact that you can get hold of all this information for free is just absolutely incredible. So I'd really, really encourage everybody to sign up. I'll put all the links into um, into the post below, below or above this, wherever they go, um, yeah. so that you can, you can see where to access them. You can get the full program, see who's speaking and what the topics are in full um and just to say thank you ever so much cassie i know you're really really frantically busy at the moment so i won't keep you any longer but thank you ever so much for coming and speaking to to us today and taking the time to do that i really really appreciate it thank you for having me it's been lovely being here and yeah if anyone's got any questions as well they can ask and i will happily answer answer anything so um but yeah and and a big thank you to all the speakers because it isn't about money um it's it is about getting information out there and and providing that hope to parents who are just scrabbling and not knowing what to do that's the whole idea behind it no that's really important you say that so many people aren't getting help at the moment if you know if they can if they can find help somewhere else then it's just really invaluable so no it's amazing thank you so much cassie and take take care and we'll talk again soon Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.